following program is brought to you in living color on WSJS Television, Channel 12. These are scenes from the Kernersville of the past, a nostalgic look at the history of the town which bills itself as the hub of the Piedmont Golden Triangle. Kernersville is located at a point almost equidistant from the cities of Winston-Salem, Greensboro, and High Point. And the town's history began with the purchase of 400 acres of farmland from the Indians. The history spans a period from the Declaration of Independence to the present, weathering good times and bad. Beginning tonight with a pageant depicting the history of the town and continuing next week with a fashion show, historic tours, and dozens of other events, Kernersville gets underway with a week-long bicentennial celebration. The photographs you are watching were collected for the preparation of a special history, which was written and published in conjunction with the bicentennial. I'm Dave Plyler. Kernersville, the first 200 years. The pictures you've just seen, we'll take a closer look at during our program tonight. I would like to introduce our guests on Kernersville, the first 200 years. Mrs. Cornelia Adams, historian for the Kernersville Bicentennial. Mr. Jack White, who is assistant to the president of Salem College and also heads up the Kerners Folly Restoration Corporation. And a longtime resident of Kernersville and a businessman in Kernersville, Mr. Kenneth Greenfield. We have several old homes to look at, and Mrs. Adams will take a look now at our first home, and won't you describe what we're seeing? Well, this is the home of Nathaniel Kerner. Nathaniel was the son of John Frederick. John Frederick was the son of, of Joseph, who was the original Kerner. Uh, most of the Kerner homes were made out of brick. They were made by the people themselves. These walls are 14 inches thick. This house is uh, situated right next door to the Main Street United Methodist Church. A descendant of Mr. Jewel Kerner, who did Kerner's Folly, is now the owner and lives in this home. These homes that we are looking at this evening will be open for tour during the bicentennial. We have about four more homes that we'll look at. Uh, Jack, uh, you've seen some of these homes. Uh, what's your impression of them? Well, they're beautiful old homes. I think this is the... Uh the real beauty of the whole tour is because you do get to see some real beautiful old homes and notice the way they were constructed and so forth back in the time when people had time to put some real effort into building a home. Ms. Adams, what are we looking at now? Uh, we're looking at the Ruth Harmon home. Now, uh, Joseph had one daughter, Salome, and Salome had two children, Ruth and um, Julius Harmon, and this is the Ruth Harmon home. Where is this located? Uh, this is located on the corner of Harmon Lane and Cherry Street. And a Kerner descendant now lives in the home, Mr. and Mrs. Charles uh, The home was Edwards. moved to Cherry That's Street right. and reworked, remodeled. Uh -huh. Now we'll uh -huh. see our next home that uh, will be open for tour during the bicentennial. And we remind you that if you need any information on when these places will be open, you can talk to the Kernersville Chamber of Commerce anytime. Uh, this is the Richard Kerner home. Uh, this is on the north side of Main Street Methodist Church. Um, Mrs. Madge Davis has restored this home, and it has many antiques in it. And it's a very beautiful home, too. Yes. Well-constructed and well-built. 
But as you say, the bricks were made uh, when the homes were built, which is an unusual thing. Uh, they don't do that anymore. I don't well, that serves two purposes. You just dig out the basement and use what you got, the dirt you got from the basement to build the bricks. Mm -hmm. so and the both. old factory buildings were brick too, also, and they were they were built in the same way mm -hmm. by the owners when they started building the building. They dug out the clay and made the brick. This is the Ted Kerner home. Uh, the man who built this was the son of Israel Kerner, who was one of John Frederick's sons. And I think, Mr. Kenneth, isn't it about the fourth or fifth generation of Kerners who are living there now? That, that would, yes, that would be, well, really the sixth generation, sixth generation. of Kerners who are living there now. Uh, this house is on Highway 150 as you go into Kernersville, just before you get to the Moravian Church. Jack, uh, you've had an opportunity to see a lot of these homes. Uh, what's your impression of uh, uh, the inside of the house, most of them? Well, most of the people that uh, live in these homes are people that have a real feeling for the historical significance as well as the beauty of things of the era in which they were built. And so they not only have tried to preserve, I think, what was there, but in many cases have kept it up and added to it, so it makes it a real fine situation. Uh, this is the Frank Davis home on North Cherry Street. Now, Mr. Davis came to Kernersville from Guilford County. Uh, he was a businessman there. He built this house about 1880, and uh, he was mayor of Kernersville for, oh, some 18 to 20 years. His uh, daughter and granddaughter, I and mean, his great-granddaughter is living yeah. there now, that's right. We have uh, at least five homes up that we're showing on our program. Uh, how many homes will be open for uh, tours during oh, the bicentennial? I think maybe there are eight or nine. Uh -huh. nine. You, you won't have any difficulty getting no, in? No, you won't have any difficulty. Will we have tour guides at the homes when you arrive? Uh, that's right, and the, the tickets may be obtained from the Chamber of Commerce, which is on the square. WSJS Television has produced In Search of Memories, a series on old homes as part of our photo project. The photo series covers historic buildings in North Carolina and various scenes, and probably, I would say, Jack, uh, Mr. Greenfield, and uh, Miss Adams, the most famous of all the old homes in Kernersville, and possibly one of the most famous homes in the state, is the old Kerners Folly. We have a film of the Folly, which uh, we'll show now. This strange and wondrous mixture of the grand and eccentric in Kernersville, North Carolina, is called Kerner's Folly, a house of secret doors and hidden staircases under four steep-pitched gables, a monument to the young heart of its 27-year-old builder, Jules Gilmer Kerner. He designed it, built it, lived in it, and loved it until his death. From the time he began construction in 1878, he oversaw each phase of building, and throughout the remainder of his long life, he added to the interior and exterior detail until the house reflected his own unconventional joy of living. From a distance, Kerner's Folly presents a facade of quaint grandeur, but as one draws nearer, the towers and steps of the arched verandas begin to build an air of seeming mystery. A sort of fairy castle atmosphere that was Jules Kerner's delight.
If the exterior of the folly was striking, the interior was extravagant. A wild, wonderful compound of grand Gothic and fanciful Victorian, spread through 23 singular rooms. These figures flank a doorway in the Folly Ballroom or Reception Room on the second floor. Everywhere, Jules Kerner's love of the beautiful and unusual was displayed. A commercial artist himself, he brought to residence in the Folly Herr Caesar Milk, a German member of the Kaiser's Royal Art Academy. But save for a few, the frescoes Herr Milch painted on the walls and ceilings throughout the house have fallen to rot and mildew, and the oil canvases have been cut or ripped from built-in frames and carried away. The ballroom's 13 massive mirrors still picture much of the original folly furnishings. Ravaged by time and vandalism, but impressive, even in ruin and disrepair. Traveler, the master of Kerner's Folly, brought furniture and ideas for furniture from diverse regions, including the Orient. To a great extent, the furnishings of the folly have remained intact, simply because they cannot physically be taken from the house. Many pieces were constructed where they now stand, and doors and stairways are too narrow to allow their exit passage. There is a fireplace for each room and hallway in the folly. Some have more than one. In every case, they exemplify Jules Kerner's love for the ornamental.
Nothing Jules Kerner touched was dull or ordinary. The canopies are long since rotted or stolen away, but the brass and enamel beds in two small second floor guest rooms were marvels, even in their own day. Another marvel at the top of a circular staircase winding three full stories to the frescoed roof was a room to shock, delight, and scandalize the Victorian mind. A completely equipped little theater, perhaps the first of its kind in the United States. Mrs. Jules Kerner, born Polly Alice Maston in what is now Winston-Salem, North Carolina, herself wrote and acted in many of the family plays presented in the Folly Theater. They were full-scale artistic productions with musicians performing in the theater's canopied orchestra pit. The theater was equipped with specially designed stage rigging elaborate lighting, and a variety of painted backdrops. First called the Juvenile Lyceum, it was later known as Cupid's Park. The theater occupied a space which once served as a hayloft, and on the ground floor, what were originally stables for fine horses, became an extraordinary series of small rooms, each complete with its own fireplace built on varying levels and decorated with a mixture of opulence and whimsy. The rooms began as stables because Jules Kerner began the folly itself prior to his marriage as a combination bachelor studio and carriage house. And at one time, the ground floor hallway was an arched drive through with carriage passengers dismounting to an entrance on the left. As converted, the hallway ran from a sun-drenched dining area at one extremity, past huge fireplaces, to what most persons called the front door, although Jules Kerner might have disagreed. He designed the house to face the world four square, and any entrance could be considered the Follies' front. When the driveway was enclosed, much of the furniture required to fill it was constructed on the spot, there it remains today, executed with a baronial flourish and massiveness which defies removal, it has withstood the passing years with surprising success. It has now been more than 80 years since these figures were carved on the doors of the hallway break front. The soft patina of old wood is dulled by the gathering dust, and the empty folly decays with advancing seasons, its future cloudy and in doubt. What will become of it? No one knows precisely, but on one point, there is almost universal agreement. If Jules Kerner's house dies, and this could happen, it would surely be among the saddest and most useless of all possible follies. Now, as you've seen, Kerner's folly is magnificent. And something has happened to it. It has been saved since this film was shot. Jack White, could you tell us about it? Well, about a year ago, there were a group of us that decided that, as the film did, that this would be an awful folly to let this place go. So we did buy it. And now we're in the process of restoring it to its, we hope, its original glory. Uh, 
we have at this point restored it from the standpoint that the outside we have pointed the bricks and have fixed this, the roof so that we can begin now work on the inside, getting it weather tight, making it uh, so that the restoration work we do inside is of some significance. And the home itself is open for tours. This now. home is open for tours, particularly during bicentennial week. Uh, it is open every Sunday afternoon as a regular schedule and holidays. Now we've talked about the home. Let's talk about the man. Mr. Greenfield, you remember Jules Kerner. Well, Here's I a remember Mr. Jules Kerner well. <clears throat> uh, I remember him as he's seen in the picture here in his, you might say, his old age. <clears throat> He is a short man, a little below medium height, took quick, quick, sharp steps when he walked. And the best description of his personality that I can give is the house itself. He really left a stamp on that uh, reflected his personality. Well, he was one of the first persons to do his own thing. He did his own thing. About, <laughs> about doing his own thing. Let's let's get into that just a moment. What what did Jules? Now, of course, I know, but what did Jules <laughs> Kerner do to become popular and uh, as well off uh, at that time as he was? Well, the Blackwell Tobacco Company in Richmond, Virginia, had a brand of tobacco known as Bull Durham. So, Mr. Jules Kerner came up with the idea of painting Bull Durham signs all over the countryside, advertising this tobacco. This is what he did. He painted all these Bull Durham signs, but he had a gimmick. Because Mr. Jules would go into a little community and he'd paint these Bull Durham signs in the most natural form that he could uh, paint them, and paint them up there on the barn real natural-like. Then he'd leave and write a letter to the editor of the paper complaining about this lewd picture of these <laughs> bulls up on the scene. And of course, everybody in town read the letter. Everybody goes out and looks at the Bull Durham sign. Then he, uh, after appropriate time, would write back a letter apologizing for having painted the sign in that fashion and would go back and paint a fence over the offending portions of the bull. He was also quite a showman. We have another picture that shows him posing inside of the folly. Mr. Greenfield, who is with Mr. Kerner here? Uh, Mrs. Kerner was a very wonderful lady. And she's shown in the picture, and also his two children. There were two children, Jules Gil McKerner, whom we knew as, Jew, as Gil McKerner, and Miss Doray, who married Mr. Donnell at Oak Ridge, and she is still living. Mrs. Donnell is still living. Mr. Gil McKerner was a lawyer in Washington during most of his life, and that's a, that's a picture of the family group. At the beginning of the program, we showed several scenes of, uh, of uh, Kernersville, and we'll look at those in just a few moments. But here's something, Jack, that uh, you took out of the folly <clears throat> and brought down for our program. This is a Cupid that was done by Caesar Mills. Now, Mr. Kerner got Caesar Mills to come over and do these paintings uh, from New York. He was a graduate of the Royal Academy in Berlin. We have been studying the interior of the folly, one of the most significant things is that all of the paintings are the only existing examples of the German itinerant artist that came around about the turn of the century. And this is an example of the type of art that he, he has, they have done. We feel that this is very necessary to preserve it. And at this point are trying to get in touch with people that know about preserving art and how to preserve pieces of art. It's a magnificent piece of work. Now let's take a look at some of the pictures that we saw earlier in the program. Mr. Greenfield, Miss Adams, Jack, uh, what do we see here? Well, you see the old inn, the original Crossroads Inn, uh, at the Crossroads of Kernersville, where the north-south highway crossed the east-west highway. If they could have been called highways in the early days, they were stagecoach roads, mud roads. One of the things I understand about uh, Kernersville years ago is it used to be known as uh, uh, a main stop between New York and Atlanta. Yes, uh, because he, that was a ch place where they changed the horses and <laughs> furnished uh, uh, meals and put up travelers overnight. Speaking of horses, what are we looking at here? Uh, now this is Mr. Kerner's uh, team of horses Daisy and Maud hitched tandem. He got that idea 
in Germany, in one of his visits over there, in, uh, one horse was in front of the other, tandem, instead of abreast. And that is his later stables and barn after he moved out of the folly. At one time, didn't Mr. Kerner have the horses inside the folly? When he originally built it, that was the way he wanted it. Just <coughs> then he got married and had to build the stables down the street somewhere. <laughs> that, was, that was a German style, you know, the, the animals in the, in the building uh, were the people mm -hmm. in the home. Now we have another picture that uh, I think uh, you probably remember, Miss Adams. Um, this is the old Kerner's, uh, Kerner's, Kerner's Academy. Kerner's Academy. Uh, Kerner's will has been known really for its interest in education, schools as far back as 1854. And this academy was established in 1858 and stayed in existence until 1907. And there were many other schools too. This building, incidentally, is located still, well, it's still in Kernersville, but it's no longer the academy, is that correct? No, no, this building has been taken down. It it's where the S&R Motor Company is now located. Yeah. yeah. An, this interesting, was taken down an interesting thing about the location of this academy was that this is in the exact center of town, and the way the town was laid out, they took this as a central point and drew a circle around and yeah. that was the boundaries of the town. This must be a 4th of July parade. It is. Uh, I feel sure. Every year, you know, this is a big deal in Carnival. had been for years. The 4th of July celebration uh, was one of the big things that everybody in the whole community, everybody in Forsyth County remembers about Carnival, the 4th of July. It's really nostalgic to have an opportunity to take a look at all these pictures. And we have many, many more that we won't have time to get into. And we've had... Uh, very little time, it seems like, to discuss what, uh, what is going on in Kernersville, but the week of Bicentennial has begun, 200 years. The first 200 years in Kernersville, and uh, many things, beard contests, uh, the tours of the old homes of Kerners Folly, uh, a pageant, several things are going on to make the uh, Kernersville area a uh, fun place to visit for the next week. Square dance. And square dancing in the middle of the town. We don't <laughs> want to forget right. that. A religious Heritage Sunday. We're uh, going to walk to church. And I think uh, <laughs> that, that too will be a, a, a highlight of the Bicentennial. Our guests, uh, Miss Cornelia Adams, historian for the town of Kernersville Bicentennial, Mr. Jack White, uh, who is with the Kernersville Restoration Corporation, and longtime businessman and resident of Kernersville, Mr. Kenneth Greenfield. We hope you've enjoyed our program, Kernersville, the first 200 years. And we wonder what the next 200 years will be like. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dave Plyler, WSJS News. Good night. Kernersville, the first 200 years, came to you from Broadcast House and was a WSJS News production.